Growing up in Alberta, never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined myself to be speaking at such a world gathering of experts about green roofs in my region. Trained as an architect, I am also an accredited green roof professional since 2009 and a design builder of living architecture. I've become involved in green roof projects, large and small. On large projects, it's typically a team effort with many consultants involved. On smaller projects at Green Tea Design, we provide turnkey solutions to design, build, plant and maintain green roofs and living walls. I want to thank GreenRoofs.com and Linda and Aramis for inviting me to speak at this very special global event, the 2015 Green Roofs and Walls of the World Summit. I'm very thankful too that 15 years ago I was pointed in the direction of Linda's amazing website that she and her husband Aramis created. At that time, it was one of the first English language websites that focused on green roof information and case study examples and remains a valuable source of ideas and resources. This is Nose Hill Park in Calgary. It's one of the largest urban parks in Canada and it contains a significant rough fescue grassland ecosystem and a number of archaeological sites. It's considered significant as grasslands are endangered in North America and most have been lost to cultivation. Many of the 66 native vascular plant species identified in Nose Hill Park may be suitable greener candidates as they thrive and are resilient to our unique climatic condition with no human input because they've evolved to suit this environment. My geographical context is quite different from other areas advancing green roofs and living walls. Some Albertans have insisted that green roofs aren't relevant or useful given our lengthy winters and all too short summers. While our climate can certainly be challenging to those who build green roofs and love to garden, given our short growing season, extreme cold temperatures in winters, freeze-thaw conditions, late spring blizzards, high variability in both daily and seasonal temperatures, not to mention the phenomenon called the Schnook wind, which affects southern Alberta, bringing warm, dry winds that desiccate the landscape. Low levels of precipitation is the primary limiting factor for green roofs, particularly for unirrigated, extensive green roofs that are prone to drying out. While we can and often do irrigate our green roofs, we need to be irrigating with harvested rainwater wherever we can and rethinking our approach to cultivated landscapes, particularly in the arid southern Alberta regions where projections show that we face potential future of water shortages due to decreased rainfall and our high industrial and domestic use of water with a steadily growing population. This winter, while eastern Canada and the U.S have had an abundance of snow, we have had an exceptionally warm, dry winter. We have very little snow remaining and we've experienced record high temperatures when normally we could expect to have snow cover and sub-zero temperatures at this time. So now that I've shared with you a bit about my context, I invite you to join me on a brief tour of a number of green roof projects, large and small, in four of Alberta's natural ecoregions. These are projects that I've been involved in. We'll start in Banff in the Rocky Mountains, then proceed to Calgary in the Prairie Steppe ecoregion, then onwards to Edmonton in the Aspen Parkland Boreal Forest ecoregion, a stop in Stettler in Central Parkland, before concluding our tour in Calgary. My first green roof project was in Banff, which is the birthplace of the National Park System in Canada. The impetus for the project was the desire to bring the park back into the town to create a kinship between built form and the surrounding mountain context. The project's owner, Peter Poole of Arctos and Bird Enterprises, wanted to create an ecological model for building and development in the town. The lead design team of Bill McDonough Alison Ewing and Russell Perry, part of William McDonough and Partners of Charlottesville, Virginia, the firm which had created the celebrated Gap Headquarters building in San Bruno, California, and Chicago City Hall Green Roof. Both of these projects highlight the use of green roof technology. 
They inspired us with concepts and ideas not yet explored within the architectural designs in our region, and we were introduced to the works of Wes Jackson of the Land Institute and others and asked to consider what it means to be native to a place. Many of these novel concepts, such as seeking harmony of human and natural communities, accepting responsibility for long-term consequences of our designs, eliminating the concept of waste and many others, were discussed at the first integrated design meeting in Banff with the entire project team. These principles, developed by William McDonner and partners, served as uh, the guiding principles for Arctos and Bird Enterprises. Completed in 2004, this 3,150 square meter project was Alberta's first sustainable mixed-use commercial and residential building which houses retail, office and restaurant spaces as well as housing and incorporated numerous green strategies including the green roofs. It provided a contemporary interpretation of the Banff design guidelines for mountain architecture. The shapes and forms of the building massing are derived from the folded plains of the surrounding mountains with low slope snow retaining roofs and a series of flat green roof decks and terraces on the lower levels. A generous open courtyard at the center of the project emulates the Bow Valley as a place of water collection. An underground parkade accommodates staff and visitor parking, composting systems and a cistern for rain and meltwater collection which is recycled to irrigate the green roof and landscape areas. The Bison Courtyard project met the owner's goals of green building design in being resource and energy efficient, responding to physical and functional performance while satisfying other core objectives such as access to daylight and visual connection to the beauty of the outdoors. The project flipped the Banff design guidelines on its ear for its modern aesthetic and drew criticism for a number of reasons, one of which was the inclusion of the green roof cover. What seemed to us to be a sensible and ecological solution for a project aiming to lessen its impact on the environment and bring nature back to the birthplace of the national parks was not fully embraced by all in Banff. Fortunately, our client did not fold when faced with these obstacles, instead choosing to build a series of mock-ups and invite the town's community up on the roof for a green roofing party. From that moment, the green roofs were in and I was hooked. The resulting design reflected the local geography of the Rocky Mountain context, with striations of natural habitat that step up the building in a series of terraces with the goal of creating habitat. There are native plantings representative of the ecoregion, montane, subalpine and alpine. To ensure the success of the native plants, seed was harvested from the immediate surroundings outside the national park but within the Bow Valley corridor and grown a year in advance in two local nurseries specializing in native plants. In all, the site incorporates 600 square meters of intensive and extensive green roofs. Green roofs were not common in Alberta at that time and came at quite an expense as the proprietary green roof system that was sourced and shipped came from Eastern Canada. The growing medium, however, was designed and blended locally as a collaboration between the local landscape architect and one of the nurseries. The media was tailored to the needs of the specific plant communities. For the shrubs and woody plants, for example, the thin nutrient growing medium of the montane areas around Banff was emulated. The flowering perennials, however, required more nutrients and a cycle of testing and augmentation of appropriate nutrients was followed. Most of the planting was completed within two days in the fall of 2004. One day for the trees and shrubs, the next for the grasses and flowering perennials. I was fortunate to participate as part of the team in planting the upper green roofs on the second day. The establishment of some of the perennials on the upper roofs experienced some challenges as well. Some of the small plugs initially planted heaved over the winter through the freeze-thaw action and others were pulled out by crows looking for food. The owner reported that the grasses outcompeted or overshadowed many of the more delicate species and ground covers. Over time, the diversity of planting decreased 
and remedial work was performed to try and control the grasses. The gardens really do attract birds, insects, and occasionally deer are spotted in the courtyard early morning, but usually only by the baker. They graze on many of the wild wildflowers and contribute to some of the replanting work. This project experience opened up a whole new world for me. The building was completed just over 10 years ago, and there are now numerous green roofs in the Banff area, many of which are developed on Arctos and Bird projects. At the second annual Cities Alive conference in Portland, Oregon in 2004, and speaking with my Calgary colleagues, we noticed that the urban centers leading in the uptake of the technology had both demonstration sites and ongoing academic or field research. Taking a cue from these leading centers, I initiated the Alberta EcoRoof Initiative, pitching a demonstration research site to Calgary Technologies, Inc. for their existing building, the Alistair Ross Technology Centre, which is located in the University of Calgary Research Park. The purpose of the project was to build capacity for extensive green roof implementation through hands-on learning and better understanding of the benefits of green roof technologies through the development of a field site. This too would illustrate that green roofs are not only viable in our area, but can help address a number of our urban and environmental issues. Another key objective was to initiate field research and create a baseline of green roof performance in Calgary. A feasibility study was conducted to review the existing condition of the PVC waterproof membrane and the reserve capacity of the structure. The structural review demonstrated that a green roof system with as much as 200 millimeters of depth of growing medium could be retrofit to the existing roofs, which was good news to us given our focus on extensive semi-intensive systems. The installation is roughly 140 square meters on each side of the common public corridor, hence an east-facing and a west-facing roof. Along with a collaborative team which included the building owner, roofing contractor, green roof supplier, native plant growers and other colleagues, we retrofit the first phase of the site, the west-facing roof, in just over two days in September 2005. We seeded it with winter wheat and fall rye as an erosion strategy to get a bit of root system established to hold the growing medium over the winter. We followed up in the spring of 2006 with phase two of the construction on the east facing roof and then planted both roofs later that same summer with a large volunteer team in just over two days. The main green roofs have uh, three profiles with growing medium depths of 113 millimeters, 150 millimeters, and 200 millimeters, and two growing medium types, an extensive and an intensive blend, all with the same loose laid proprietary green roof system by Suprema. The south ends of the roof have the extensive blend of growing medium, while the north end has the intensive growing medium. Primarily native plants were selected and planted as plugs at a spacing of 10 plants per square meter. Flowering forbs such as wild strawberries, cone flowers, pussy toes, and many others, as well as native and non-native sedum, native bunch grasses, and evergreen shrubs were planted. A seed mix meant to speed up the vegetative cover and protect against weeds unfortunately introduced mat forming grasses, many of which squeezed out some of the flowering forbs two small sections of pre-cultivated systems, live roof trays and zero floor mats, were added for demonstration purposes, and additional loose laid plots were added for further plant experimentation. We've led many tours and organized work bees on the roofs over the years to spread the knowledge of green roof construction, planting and maintenance, and gain assistance in the care of the roofs. I've become the chief caretaker of these roofs. I live nearby and monitor them regularly for, during the summer months to ensure that they're not too dry during drought conditions. These roofs are manually irrigated as required. We fertilize them in year three to, to primarily increase the levels of nitrogen in the growing medium which had fallen away. The grasses as well as the weeds really took off which as in the bison courtyard project resulted in choking out many more of the flowering forbs. The vegetation is mowed once a year with a string trimmer. 
Tree seedlings and volunteer species found on the Alberta government's invasive species are removed. Other volunteers, such as native campanula or fireweed, are left for their contribution to biodiversity and colour. A short-term study of a stormwater monitoring platform was made by Westhoff Engineering Resources in 2007 to evaluate the runoff reduction and water quality attributes of two green roof plots relative to a reference roof. The raised platforms were constructed adjacent to the eco-roof. The Alberta Eco Roof Initiative project is the green roof that I have worked most with. It has evolved over time and my understanding of it has grown. I intentionally call it an eco roof because it's not green all the time. The changes in the colours and the blend of the plant species over the seasons has been interesting to observe. We've noticed the insects including the waves of dragonflies and the many birds stopping by, some to hunt insects, others tugging at the seeds and drinking water. I've even noticed on more than one occasion a hawk dining on a pigeon that he hunted. The ecosystem of this roof has become increasingly rich over time. It's a human-made ecosystem, but it's a living system. It's not a decorative or rooftop garden. Many residents in the building understand this, and it is my hope that with their realization the appreciation will spread. Despite the recent increase of green roof development in our region, we continue to bump up against misperceptions. One such challenge is that the roof doesn't look like a garden. It was never our intention that it be a garden. The increase in the number of built projects, the information shared between various disciplines involved in green roofing, and continued collaboration amongst those involved in the Alberta Eco Roof Initiative project are helping to improve the development of green roofs in our region and increasing the understanding and depth of knowledge. New funding through MyTax and Innovate Calgary will permit similar research to expand the palette of viable plant species, which will proceed this summer. The addition of thermocouple sensors and a climate monitoring station will allow studies of the microclimate impacts and heat flow through the roof can be evaluated. Next we go to Edmonton, Alberta, which is one of the most northern major cities in North America to incorporate green roofs. One of the largest green roofs I've worked on in Alberta was completed in 2011 at the Robbins Pavilion, a new facility of holistic healing at the Royal Alec Hospital in Edmonton. The project commemorates Ted Hole, farmer and successful business owner, and his wife and business partner Lois Hole, the former Lieutenant Governor of Alberta. Both shared a love of gardening and built long and respected careers in horticulture. The Hole family chose to honour the legacy of their ancestors by sponsoring a very special healing garden. In addition to commemorating the lives of Ted and Lois Hole, special people to Albertans and Canadians, the garden provides patients an opportunity to see something positive and to remind them that there is life around them. The garden provides visitors with a lush and tranquil environment of relaxation and catharsis. At 2,400 square meters, it's one of the largest single greeners in Alberta. A combination of extensive, semi-intensive and intensive green roof areas, it's located on a portion of the second level of the facility, which houses the Lois Hole Hospital for Women. It's closely surrounded by other buildings in the complex, forming an elevated and protected courtyard, which is also enjoyed from above by the adjacent parkade and the many patient rooms and common areas that look down on it. Following detailed site analysis and working with the client team, Alberta Health Services and the Royal Alexandra Hospital Foundation, initial concepts were developed and tested by the IBI group. On this project, my role was that of project architect, and following input from Bill Hole, one of the project sponsors, a design scheme which references the linear planting rows of an agrarian garden was approved and developed. The hospital was organized around key pedestrian axis, which links the multi-faith chapel in the hospital interior to the feature bell tower on the roof. Generously sized pathways for wheelchairs intersect the major axis and lead the visitor to various seating areas and special features of the garden, such as waterfall features, a reflecting pool, colorful glass screen trellises, and places for art, including a bronze bust of Ten Ted and Lois Hole, another key focal point in the garden. 
A stand of trembling aspens aligned over columns serves as a visual and acoustic buffer from the noise of the loading dock below and the adjacent cooling plant. A highlight of the healing garden is the diverse vegetation. Trees, shrubs, tall grasses and flowers were chosen to blend the natural flora of Alberta with ornamental favorites and were, all were procured from the project sponsor, the Holes Greenhouse. Careful consideration was made for suitability for both the local climate and the particular microclimates of the roof. Ground cover species including sedums, grasses, sage, and Virginia creeper in planters with 150 millimeters and 300 millimeters in depth of growing medium. Ornamental shrubs, taller grasses, roses with willows and junipers for winter color were added in planters with 600 millimeters of growing medium depth. Trees such as trembling and Swedish aspens, tilia, hawthorn, and cherry were planted with 900 millimeters of growing medium depth. Considerations were made for color distribution throughout the year, including opportunities to change up the planting with the inclusion of annuals from the sp sponsor's nursery. An innovative system of lightweight fiberglass planters were custom fabricated for the project to allow for quick assembly, avoid higher costs of poured in place concrete, and uh, avoid penetrating the waterproofing. A system of cross ties and cables strengthen the walls of the planters and resist horizontal forces of the growing medium and the tree roots. The planters red color references terracotta pots and adds some bright color to the monochromatic winter landscape. Cost control was a critical feature to ensure approval of the project during a period of superheated economic climate in Alberta. Several in-house cost estimates, as well as one from a third-party consulting group, were prepared to monitor for potential cost increases. The project was developed as a second phase to the Robbins Pavilion construction, as the existing two-ply SBS waterproofing applied in a conventional roof application over concrete structure shelters an intensive care unit, it was thought prudent that it in addition to a flood test of the membrane, a leak detection system be retrofitted, permitting the ability to locate any potential leaks immediately given the sensitivity of the hospital patients within the building below. The use of a sole proprietary system ensured that the owner had a single point of responsibility for the joint supplier contractor warranty. However, the design team felt somewhat constrained by this requirement. There were numerous starts and stops along the way for various levels of approval, including the municipal permitting process. The construction project was tendered at the start of the summer of 2010 as a lump sum contract, and by the time the project was ready for planting, winter was drawing near. Hence, construction was suspended until the spring of 2011 to complete the plantings and deficiencies. Christmas lights are added in the winter for added winter interest and the lighting of the healing garden has become an anticipated event. Opened in 2011 to great fanfare, the project is enjoyed and appreciated by the entire hospital community, patients, staff and visitors. Keeping up with the maintenance required to keep it looking at its best will be an ongoing challenge as a formal garden design. It is hoped that the green roof can be used to enhance learning at the nearby technical school by providing practical experience for students in horticulture, landscape and architectural technology. This project was built on a new office and industrial complex in the town of Stettler, which is located in East Central Alberta. Atco Electric, a utility company, opened their new energy efficient operations centre which was designed to enhance customer service. Their new project saw a reduced energy consumption of, with 55% savings compared to a typical facility of its kind. Other sustainable features include a high performance HVAC system and triple glazed windows. The building's water fixtures are also designed to reduce water consumption and rainwater is captured on the roofs for reuse in the wash base for the trucks. 
The green roofs were added more for demonstration purposes than anything, and are the first green roofs in the town. They were built over the one-story public area in the west end of the complex and are visible from within the offices on the second level. The anticipated green roof design was more of a loose-fit garden of ground cover with rows of grasses and upright species planted in deeper mounds serving as shelter belts to create friction and slow down the prevailing western wind. A ribbon of blue fescue and upright species meander through the field areas and shelter belts like a river on the prairies. Plant species included a blend of hardy sedums, clump grasses, chives, sage, and upright sedum autumn joy. As what often happens in construction projects, a delay occurred because of a needed redesign to the adjacent overhang, which would have impacted the green roof had it been built. The base layers of the laid-in-place green roof system were installed in November 2012. In late spring 2013, Green Tea Design began the planting as the date had already been set for a grand opening in early July, getting the design planted and irrigation system installed just over a month, month in advance was as early as we could possibly do it given the, the late wet spring. With a number of students from the University of Calgary, my colleague Deb and I led them to prepare the roof by adding planting guidelines and contours and dividing up the planting area. Shortly after our planting, southern Alberta was hit with some of the worst summer storms on record. In Calgary, this resulted in the devastating flood and we missed our regularly scheduled maintenance visit. The supplier visited the roof on our behalf and sent pictures confirming that all was coming in fine, albeit plants were growing slowly. Less than two weeks later, however, a panic call from the operations manager urged us to make an emergency maintenance visit. When we arrived, we saw a sea of lamb's quarters, a particularly nasty invasive weed. We could not even see the planted species for the weeds. With the grand opening taking place later the following week, we spent two full days cleaning up the green roof. By fall of 2013, the roof had filled in very well. Although the plants were slow to come in the following spring, one of the grasses did not overwinter well and was eventually replaced that spring. The irrigation system also broke at some point and was left to run for several weeks. Unbeknownst to me, the regular operations contact was away from the office for many weeks, so there was little attention paid to the roof, which is a challenge when working in a remote location. As a result, many of the drought-tolerant sedums were overwatered and had rotted and needed replacement. Other species continued to do well and put on extensive growth. Here are a few last pictures of the roof in its second season. Many of the plants are already growing into one another and will need to be thinned or removed. Grass seed and agricultural weeds also do blow in on the wind given the rural location which leads us to believe that the design will need to evolve or more targeted maintenance of increased frequency may be required. And now let's return to Calgary to view a last project and recap. The vegetated roof replacement project at Calgary's Municipal Hall is a project that was initiated by a concept design entered into the 2007 Mayor's Urban Design Awards entitled Grey to Green. I created this together with Kelly Learned of Cochrane and was supported by the IBI group. Its purpose was to draw attention to and spark an interest in the opportunity of green roof retrofits. Knowing that the roofs on Calgary's Municipal Hall had exceeded their lifespan and were about to be renovated several at a time, we envisioned that the converting of one or more roofs from grey to green would assist the City of Calgary in gaining a better understanding of green roofs through the creation of a research and demonstration site. Calgary's municipal building is the perfect symbol for highlighting green building technologies. It is highly visible and provides the opportunity to strengthen the City's commitment and response to the challenge of sustainability. And when looking at the building from above, 
you can see the amount of surface area of rooftops to improve. The project started in earnest in 2010 with a full RFP process. My role entailed acting as the project lead for the IBI group with an integrated team of building and engineering consultants. The starting point was to conduct initial site reviews and explorations to determine the feasibility and opportunities of incorporating the green and reference roofs to research a host of ecosystem co-benefits and organize an education and outreach program. For the research opportunities and instrumentation setup, we partnered with Dr. Maureen Connolly's lab at the BCIT Center for Architectural Ecology. While there are many rooftops to re-roof at Municipal Hall, the initial site for the Green Roof Research Project is on two roofs of 330 square meters each, located on the east side of the building facing East Village development. These two roofs are similar in architectural characteristics and microclimates, although one story difference in elevation. The structural decks are both sloped to two internal drains uh, on each roof. Construction finally started in June of 2013, but was halted quickly by the devastating flood that crippled our city. The project later resumed in the fall and proceeded to the completion of the retrofit of the waterproof membrane and the addition of new guardrails on the fifth floor, with planting held off until the spring of 2014. The fifth floor is constructed as the vegetated roof, while the fourth floor serves as the reference roof. The green roof has 150 millimeters of lightweight extensive growing medium produced by Zinco, which was blended to FLL standards. There is a vegetated free zone along the perimeter of the roof and in between rows of planting beds for ease of circulation and access. Nine plant species sourced as 72 size plug plants from two nurseries were selected as appropriate choices for the research. The plant palette includes three sedums, two clump grasses and four flowering forbs, six of which are native to our region. They were planted at a typical spacing of 150 millimeters on center using a planting template and arranged in quadrants for the plant viability study. A team from the City of Calgary Parks Department planted the plants in two days in late July of 2014. While both roofs are outfitted with a climate station and through roof sensors, the fifth floor roof is equipped with additional sensors to record the changing soil and membrane temperatures as well as the moisture content in the growing medium. An automated irrigation system efficiently delivers water to the plants as needed through a network of drip tubes. The construction of the roofs of the project was largely completed last summer and the stormwater monitoring system is currently under construction. This project will also serve the municipality and larger community to build awareness of and to educate about the benefits and challenges associated with this technology. Over the two to three years, the roofs will be evaluated and the research programs will be underway. It's been important to me to be a part of the research in our region to help advance emerging green roof technologies and help our municipal leaders create supportive policies. I have been working towards a master's degree in geography at the University of Calgary with a specialization in energy and environmental systems. This I do in the effort to bring greater understanding and awareness of the dynamics of green roof performance in my region by participating in local research. I'm inspired by the work of the many living architecture colleagues around the world combining plants and structures to create innovative solutions to tackle both human and environmental issues. We share interests in beauty, quantification analysis, long-lasting projects and service to our communities. These are all important topics to focus on as we reshape our urban communities in the efforts to become more sustainable and more resilient. What we build in Alberta's major cities tends to set the tone for our smaller communities, so it's important that we get it right with these projects. There's an old saying that goes, what's out of sight is out of mind. Unfortunately, one part of our city that's been out of mind, but clearly in our sights in the downtown area, are the dreary and often flat landscapes formed by the rooftops of our modern buildings. 
By some estimates, rooftops account for 30 to 40 percent of roofs in suburban areas, but 70 to 75 percent in the downtown core. That's a lot of impervious, off-gassing surfaces and probably the most underutilized real estate in all cities. From the vantage point of a roof or upper story of a downtown high-rise, I often like to look at the surrounding roofscapes, the acres of barren rooftops. Cities, as viewed from the air, often show that the biggest opportunities to add vegetation in existing areas are on roofs and walls. In more densely built urban centers, modifying sidewalks and roadways are more difficult to adjust, particularly in most Canadian cities that are subject to repeated freeze-thaw cycles, such as in Calgary. I also think about the wastefulness of these useless and often ugly industrial and warehouse roofs along flight paths to the airport. Going forward, opportunities abound for experimentation with new aesthetics blending urban conservation with contemporary landscape expressions. In the future, I imagine people flying in and out of Calgary and looking out their airplane window, not at the barren roofs of the industrial landscapes, but at eco-roofs and rooftop gardens. Instead of endless grey, dreary and wasted spaces on the tops of buildings, they would see acres of green roofs restoring rich prairie biodiversity. Now returning to the small collection of built projects that we've just toured, even in cold tempered Alberta we could be putting our rooftops to better use. And as we do, we should strive to build, plant and maintain them to be low input ecologically driven designs which contribute to greater resiliency in our urban areas. I'm truly thankful for having clients who get it and who are keen to get their green roofs installed, some even wanting to be part of what can be pioneering efforts. While a small group of green roof enthusiasts in Calgary and elsewhere in Alberta, to which I belong, have proven that green roofs are not only viable, but have shown that they can be useful here. Still, we have much work to do to make them more regionally appropriate and more sustainable, recognizing that we too are experiencing the effects of climate change. It's my hope that once we better understand the extent and impact of the benefits to our region, that there will be increased acceptance and implementation. Please won't you join me in this exciting challenge. Thank you.